Hi there, welcome to this lecture on life. I'll be talking about what life is today. So here is our lecture. What is life? Um, what I'd like you to do first is actually see if you can answer this question. Um, can you think about what the requirements are for life? As long a list as you can. So pause the video to do this. Now I'll go through this. So the first requirement is that it's composed of cells. All life is made up of either one or more cells. Humans are obviously multicellular. And this is a requirement that viruses don't have. So a lot of people, some people do, but most biologists don't consider viruses alive. Um, humans obviously have many cell types. Some are shown here, we'll talk about many of those. But this is cell theory, the idea that all life is composed of one or more cells. Next is or some type of organization. This is in order to maintain boundaries, both between the outside world and the inside world, but also within the body. So the skin is the main boundary humans have for outside versus inside of the world. Um, but also a single cell and our cells also have a plasma membrane that would maintain boundaries between the outside of the cell environment and the inside of the cell environment. Those are different environments and we wanna be able to regulate those, um, maintain differences maintain the internal environment. Um, another example would be body membranes inside the human body and other mammals, other animals that um, separate different cavities and compartments. So organization and even at the level of bacteria, a single cell with a cell membrane. Next, respond to the environment. So all life has to be able to respond. That can mean a lot of things. It includes movement, but it's not limited. So in a, a basic a cell level, it could be a signaling molecule binding to a receptor and the response of that cell, or it can mean running from a bear. All life must grow and develop. So cell growth, cell division, and then differentiation, which means change um, cell specialization. So the idea that we develop from babies to adults, that is development. In order for that to happen, our cells have to divide, grow, and then differentiate into different types. Um, this even happens for bacteria at a simpler level as well. Development from a young bacteria to an old bacteria, and they don't live forever, right? Reproduce, and this may, um, this means both at the level of a single cell, right, which is what bacteria do only. Um, our cells do this as well. Our cells divide um, or reproduce it from one cell into two, and then again. Um, it also can mean reproduction in terms of making new humans. So male and female complex reproductive parts that act to make sperm and egg and reproduce that way. So reproduce is making copies of oneself, whether that's the level of the cell or entire organism. And for bacteria, the cell and the organism are the same. This is one other thing bacteria, um, viruses cannot do on their own without the machinery from a host cell. So they cannot do this without um, another cell. Metabolism, this is a big one. Um, a cell is generally the chemical reactions that a cell carries out. So this is obtaining nutrients, carrying out chemical processes, and then excreting the waste from those chemical reactions. Um, so this is everything related to what our bodies need to be able to do in order to grow, develop, reproduce, organize. That takes metabolism to be able to do those things. Um, takes energy chemical reactions to do work and do carry out processes. That's metabolism. And then all this needs to be regulated. Um, this is one of the, the cooler parts, I think. So everything from growth and development, reproduction, metabolism, we need to be able to regulate those processes so that they happen at the right time in terms of what environmental effects are happening, um, and also so that they happen in order to maintain homeostasis. So we want to be able to regulate um, certain types of metabolism to regulate heat, for example, um, the amount of heat produced. So regulation helps us maintain homeostasis, which is maintaining those uh, variables, regulated variables within the normal ranges so that we can continue to function and function well and grow and develop. Last one I have here is not really a requirement of life, but is a characteristic of life. So I wanted to make sure to mention it. So evolution is the change over time, right, that um, all life does 
and it's a process of just due to um, you know mutations and all those changes with natural selection happen happening. And so it's an important part to consider with human anatomy and physiology. Um, and this is a part of what all life, a characteristic of all life. So what I want you to do now is think about um, some of the processes I have listed here. So there's some processes that are related to um, what we need to do as living organisms. So some of these like excrete is directly regulated to metabolism. Um, so is digest. What I want you to do is define these different processes and then think about what organ system is um, responsible for these. This is kind of tying in what processes we need to carry out in terms of living humans to the organ systems that you should be learning um, and hopefully know some of already. So for example, respire. Respire is the ability to obtain oxygen and excrete carbon dioxide. You may not have worded it that same way, that's fine. I don't want you just copying down what I write. I want you to um, make this make sense for you. So respiration is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And it's important that carbon dioxide is the waste, right? It is the, um, the product of cellular metabolism that we have to get rid of. And respiration, breathing is one way we get rid of carbon dioxide. We need oxygen as it, for our metabolism in order to carry out our body processes. So what organ system does this? You maybe know this already, um, the, the respiratory system is involved in respiration. Um, so if you could actually pause the video and write a description and organ systems as best you can for the rest of these, please do that. Here you go, so here's our descriptions. Digestion is obtaining of all the nutrients, um, including glucose. Circulation, carrying molecules throughout the body. Excretion, getting rid of unneeded molecules. And regulation is regulating all of that. You may have worded, again, word these the way that works for you. Organ systems involved here are typically just one. So um, respiration, we already talked about. Digestive system is responsible for digestion. Circulation, you may have gotten cardiovascular. If you called it circulatory, that's fine. Lymphatic is another one, though. Carries um, lymph system, right, to, uh, uh, the immune system, but also is important for in relation to the cardiovascular system because it helps the drainage from our, um, all of our active tissues. Excretion is one that has quite a few. So digestive, urinary, and respiratory is one you may not have mentioned. That's that carbon dioxide, um, getting rid of that carbon dioxide. Um, digestive, hopefully you thought of, and urinary is, is, is huge, right? So getting rid of nitrogenous wastes and regulating pH is a big one of the urinary system. And then regulation, so nervous and endocrine systems. So right here, I think the point of this is for you to tie in what you know about the organ systems to what it does for us as living organisms. And then you can see then how this relates to maintaining homeostasis, so maintaining normal functioning um, of the organism. All right, please let me know if you have questions on this. Otherwise, I will see you later.